Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Gordon again. It's a privilege to be here to share with you the Bible, the Word of God. And today we are on Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 to 10, verse 1 to 10. So uh, if you can, turn, your, uh, turn to your Bible, First Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 to 10. We pray first. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace and love and your faithfulness to all of us. Lord, while we are yet sinners, uh, enemies of God, ignorant about Christ, you shine on us and redeem us through giving us faith in Christ Jesus, your Son, that we can trust in him and all of our sin can be forgiven. And we can be right with God because you love us so much. You sent him to replace, to, to pay for our, uh, our sins, uh, consequences. And Lord, thank you for your everlasting love to sinners, all of us, that you still working in our life, changing us, molding us to the image of Jesus. That we lost your glory in Adam, but now in Jesus we... You restore our image in Christ, in, in God so that we can be like you who is holy and righteous and kind and loving and merciful. Oh Lord, this is a long process where, and sometimes we fail you and disobey you. We ask for your forgiveness or, and continue to cleanse us, forgive us, renew us, strengthen us so that we can continue this journey of sanctification by your grace and full faith and for your glory. Oh Lord, bless this hour as we study your word. Today's topic is about sanctification, about living a holy life in front of God. And that's pleasing to you. And that's the way you call us to follow Jesus. So Lord, motivate us and stimulate our, and if our conscience become, not, become numb to sin and uh, pray that you will revive us so that our soul will be restored and we can live a life that's worthy of the gospel and pleasing to God. We commit our hearts, mind, and soul, spirit to your gracious hand because you love us. But also today we're taking the communion. We pray for your presence and your uh, and you minister to all of our hearts and strengthen us. We come in this time into your gracious hand. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Okay, let's turn to First Thessalonians chapter 4. Let me read it to you. Verse 1 to 10. Finally, brothers, we instructed you how to live in order to please God. As in fact, you are living. Now we ask you to and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For you know that what instruction we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that's holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the heathen who do not know God. And in that and that in this matter no one should wrong his brother or take advantage of him, the Lord will punish men for all such sins. For we have already told you and warned you, for God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, he who rejects this instruction does not reject man, but God, who gives you his Holy Spirit. Verse 9. Now, about brotherly love, we do not need to write to you, for you yourself have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all the brothers throughout Macedonia. Yet I, we urge you, brothers, to do more and more. Two times uh, in this uh, few verses, Paul encouraged the Thessalonian Christian to Keep doing the right thing, uh, walking with God and obeying God in their lives, daily lives. 
to do more and more. Verse 10 and then verse uh, 2, verse 1, uh, to do more and more. That means to keep on doing the right thing and not to give up and not to sidetrack it, to be side, sidetracked and also to keep on growing and walking in Christ with Him. Uh, because we do live in a changing world. Uh, our mood change, our environment change, our health change, our mind can change all the time. So it's a pause reminding all of us to keep checking ourselves, walking with God in the right track, and to keep doing what's pleasing to Him more and more. And let's go to verse 1. Brother, finally, we instruct you how to live in, a, in order to please God. In fact, you are living. Um, so the, um, the big, big umbrella is all this teaching about uh, is to instruct them to walk alive, walk in a way, walk in ways that's pleasing to God, that, that He uh, approved, that He that's, that's right, that's obedience to God's mind and teaching. And will, so uh, sin is disobedience. Adam and Eve were, was inst- were instructed not to. You can eat everything, but not that particular tree because it's not good for you. Uh, but they li- listened to the lies of Satan and uh, and also attracted by the uh, the the fruit's beauty, uh, or, or maybe eager to be uh, to upgrade themselves to God's. Uh, Closer to God's level, uh, as, so they doubt the Lord's instruction and, and yield to Satan's lies. So that's sin originally. Th- that is disobedient or doubting God's word uh, and not doing God's word and not doing God's will. So now we are redeeming Christ Jesus, uh, the ultimate. Uh, Purpose of God, one one of the one of the many purposes of God, while we're here, is to sanctify us, to mold us into Christ's image, to change us, or the word sanctification has appeared in this book, is is cleansing us, renewing us from a fallen image into Christ-like image, into God's image, restore our lost image in in the Garden of Eden. Now in Christ Jesus, God restore that godly character that He's God originally made us through Jesus Christ redemption. So this is a process until we go to heaven. Uh, while we're living on earth, we are still influenced by desires and needs and uh, good or bad the desires. Uh, we we need to yield to God's. All time, full time, uh, sanctification work through the indwelling Holy Spirit in our heart. Every day, whatever we go, wherever we go, whatever we do, the Holy Spirit is living in us, is guiding us, prompting us, and uh, speaking to us. When you make a decision, I myself feel that uh, there are times that God's prompting my heart, uh, either stopping me to do it. Or leading me to do to walk into his path, so we need to uh, be in tune with the Holy Spirit, walk with the Holy Spirit, uh, so that that's the, the the way to be, you know, to live to live an obedient and sanctified life. Uh, verse five twenty two of Galatians, Galatians five twenty two, but the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I mean, he bears fruit in in our life, and he you allow him to work in your heart. You change. He changes you. He changes you. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy in Christ, peace in Christ, patience in the Lord, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. And self control is one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Mentioned in Galatians five, uh, and he mentioned self-control here. 
in our later we'll talk about morality and so self-control is a combination of our mind our, our, our heart that we yield to God and plus the work of the Holy Spirit guiding us so is God is leading us if we let him lead us then we'll bear the fruit of the uh, holiness so it is not 100 percent God's responsibility yeah God is changing you sanctifying us but hey we have to respond to God we have to let him we have to let him lead us and we have to deter uh, uh, yield to his, uh, our mind to obey God you have to obey God yourself. No one can force you. I cannot force you. You cannot force me. No one can force ourselves to make up our mind. It is your mind. You have to make that decision. Uh, this is part of my conclusion. Is uh, Purity is a choice. It, 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 you have to determine to do that. And you... By God's grace, you, one day you're convicted that, oh, my life is so messed up. I need to be changed by God. I need to walk closer with the Holy Spirit. Um, that you, you respond to his calling to holiness. And I'm sure he, he will bless that decision. And uh, some many down the, in, in our journey with God, there are many times we stumble and uh, we grieve the Holy Spirit. And we mess up ourselves, but God is a forgiving God and merciful. If we repent, and He always there to forgive and also renew, and then you continue to make up your mind to purity, to live a pure life of purity. So if the big picture is to please God in our living, and particularly uh, that's one area that He is talking. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. Verse 2, for we know that what instruction we gave you by the authority of Lord Jesus. So he's not talking about man's opinion. He's not Paul's opinion. He's not uh, Peter or whoever's opinion. It is Jesus' teaching here. He's instructing them with God's will, the Lord's authority. So better listen, you and me. Verse 3, it is God's will. That you should be sanctified. That you should avoid sexual immorality. Let me repeat it. It is God's will that you, that me, should be sanctified. To be cleansed, to be set apart. That you should avoid, it's the negative part. The positive is to be sanctified. And the negative part is to avoid, stay away, run away from sexual immorality. That each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that's holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the heathen who do not know God. So, um, so he, verse four, he, uh, verse three and four, he started to introduce this this uh, theme here in in this uh, section. That Peter, I mean uh, Timothy, went to visit them and bring back. Good news that they're doing well. They are very hospitable. They are very loving Christian. Um, we don't know. But maybe there are some areas in this, uh, in this area that God prompted um, Paul to address. Uh, they, do, they did live in a very pagan uh, environment. Uh, Thessalonica is... Uh, under the Romans' reign, and uh, a lot of uh, Greek culture, pagan culture, were, per, uh, were permeated in, in the in the in the land. Uh, that affects their worldview. Uh, who God, uh, uh, the view of God, uh, the uh, and also affect their moral standard. Uh, anyway, he. Is uh, charging us to know that it is God's will that that we must be sanctified by God, and, and one of the ways of sanctification is to be sexually pure, avoid sexual immorality. Um, uh, the word maybe uh, 
well, definitely talk about s- sexual sins, and uh, the, the the direct context probably of adultery. Uh, uh, a married man uh, violate uh, uh, have adultery or uh, have sexual intercourse and uh, sexual relationship with besides his wife. Uh, that's pornea. That that's the Greek word. Uh, uh, it's uh, basically uh, sexual sins and and marital unfaithfulness, uh, but but it is in could be a very general term. Uh, anything that's not sexual behavior, not according to God's plan, not according to God's design purpose of sex, and um, that we have to be careful and avoid. Um, and then he bring up, we should, each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that's holy and honorable. So that's how we should live. Uh, we should be sanctified how? But is to live a life, in, in, particularly in, in our sexual behavior, is holy that's is a God's character, holy and, uh, and honorable. Is not shameful. Uh, that is uh, acceptable to God. Con- in contrast to the pagans, not non-Christian or no, who don't know God, not in passionate lust, like the heathen, who do not know God. If you do not know God, then that totally affect the, your conviction, your will, will, your value about many things, uh, wealth or. Um, Ethics, uh, definitely sexual uh, morality. Uh, let me read a little bit to you about uh, some understanding of the culture at that point, uh, around that time, uh, Roman empires, and um, not necessarily Jewish. Uh, Jews have uh, Old Testament, so so they uh, practice a monogamy on uh, one wife, one husband. Uh, but the Greek culture, uh, pagan culture, oh, totally uh, different. Everything goes. Uh, let me read a little bit from, uh, I think this is from F.F. Bruce's commentary on First Thessalonian. He, he, he quotes something uh, uh, from this uh, guy from Athens, uh, who's a very reputable citizen of Athens around 4th century B.C. So, uh, 300 years, a few hundred years before Christ. Uh, that's their, uh, that's what he wrote. Uh, he said, this guy, uh, he said, we kept, we keep mistress, mistresses for pleasure, concubine for our day-to-day bodily needs. But we have wives to produce legitimate children and serve as trustworthy gar- guardians for our, of our homes. This was the outlook of a reputable citizen Athens in the 4th century BC. Over two centuries earlier, Solon, uh, the great legislator of Athens, is said to have legalized legalized prostitution and proclaimed that the profits from the state brothels should be used. Guess for what? The profits from state brothels should be used for building of temples Worshipping all the all kinds of God from the of the Greece, no official religious sanction should be expected against the practice of prostitution. Here we are concerned only. I mean, uh, this is the quote uh, from from page eighty six of F. F. Bruce commentary. So so he quoted some writing from fourth century before Christ. Uh, that's the Moral standard, general, general, uh, generally, uh, men have a. Uh, they they have, uh, uh, not, not funny, but but it, it is going on like that. They have mistresses for pleasure, and concubine, uh, for our day to day body needs. So they they think that's uh, totally acceptable and quote unquote normal. But we still have our wife to provide legitimate children and serve trustworthy guidance of our home. So uh, that's the 
moral, moral standard uh, at that point of time. Uh, people can get married, have many children, and have a wonderful home, but uh, they still have many uh, affairs and, and relationship outside marriage, sexual relationship, and uh, they justify it. They say, oh, that's our body needs, and it's okay to do it. And uh, later, they said the legalized, the guy suggested legalized prostitution, and um, the income, the tax they got can used to can be used to build temples for all the gods. So religion has no moral implication. You can be very religious, but your life can be totally in darkness. And if the gods has no moral standard, then their life will have no moral standard. That's why idolatry is so popular, because people want to ask some god to protect them. But on the other hand, they don't want this god to in, interfere their morals, their, their morality and, and their ethics. Uh, god just help me to do what I ask him, uh, give us health, give us uh, wealth. But on the other hand, I live my life. I, I can uh, have five uh, girlfriends and uh, two wives and uh, whatever. Uh, I can cheat uh, in, in my business. I can lie every day. I can live a double life or a triple life. <laughs> uh, it has nothing to do with God. Uh, that, that's popular. Uh, that's why people don't want to worship the only true God of this universe through Jesus Christ because He has a moral standard and He has a will for you in your ethics. In uh, particularly here, the sexual activities. And, uh, he requires us to live a pure life sexually. And uh, a pure life, as uh, as defined in the scripture, uh, marriage, full marriage, uh, a man or woman can satisfy the sexual desire. Uh, when God put them together, they uh, it is totally legitimate and uh Pleasing to God, that's how God designed sex, is for husband and wife to enjoy this relationship. Uh, love, through love, they have sex and then have children and to have the family. And that's the wonderful design of God. So later he suggests, uh, 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 actually in other book in Corinthians, I mean in, uh, it's in 1 Corinthians 7, it says uh, to have uh, encouraged people to get married uh, so that they will not be uh, vulnerable sexually uh, because he said the, the, their law immorality they, where they're living so it's better to get married or, or, or to uh, be burned in, in lust and so um, marriage is a way God provides for uh, to satisfy our sexual needs um, the sex is not as evil by itself is God designed to, to Adam and Eve to so that they can have children and to to, to uh, for procreation to have children and to have family uh, but it is after the fall that uh, we trace all our desires and all our thinking and God give us hand and feet uh, but we use it for violence to kill people to hurt people uh, God give us a mind we use it to think about bad stuff to trick people to lie, to uh, um, take advantage of others. Uh, so it's, it is a fallenness of human, and one of the fallenness of human is in, in sex, and that you see all the immorality in this world. Uh, back then, Greek uh, culture or, or first century culture, uh, that's all, it's bad, it's bad. Uh, it's nothing different back then, it's the same thing because the human's heart is the same, all the same, same, very dark and very fallen. Uh, so, but they manifest in different ways, different forms, in different manners. Today, it is challenging, but it is nothing uh, surprising to God. Uh, the world is just heading towards that direction, uh, getting closer and closer to uh, Jesus' return to judge this world. So that's why he asked, Paul asks us to be sober 
uh, and to be careful, to be careful. Um, it is God's will, he said, that you, we, all of us, should be sanctified to avoid sexual immorality. Uh, so may God help us to check ourselves, uh, whether we are living this kind of life or whether we are not living this kind of life. Uh, if not, then we should rep- respond and repent to God, ask Him to change and clear up our mind and help us to walk in the right path. Um, then there's a warning about uh, adultery, verse 6. Uh, there's a warning. That in, this, that in this matter, no one should wrong his brother and take advantage of him. The Lord will punish men for such sin, f- as we have already told you and warned you. Uh, very likely, he's talking about uh, if you uh, commit adultery with another married woman or, or not married woman, uh, you violating her first and foremost, and secondly, you violating her husband, the uh, f- future of tem- uh, uh, the the present husband. Uh, you are robbing that the uh, the dignity of that w- lady, and also violating her husband or future husband. So, so this this is uh, not just between you and her; it is also. Uh, of hurting other people too. If you have a wife, that's hurting your wife. If you have children, you're hurting your children. So the so sin is a, not a private matter. Sin is always, uh, first and foremost, violating God, for sure of God's glory. You put God to shame. You, you are putting yourself to shame. And you also, in the process, hurt a lot of others and uh, the fruit is death the fruit of the sin is death always destructive uh, verse 7 for God did not cause to be impure but to live a holy life I think this is the theme of this section God is calling us for not uh, if you're a Christian that's he already called you he, he called you to be pure not impure to be pure in front of God to be morally upright, right, to be sexually pure, but to live a holy and to live a holy life. So not just a thinking, not just a, a theory. Uh, we all heard this, be- I mean, it is in our head, all this being sexually moral, uh, definitely not a new thing for you as a Christian. However, he asks us to live it out, to live a holy life. That's uh, every day uh, rubber meet the road uh, when we live in this world, when we um, lead our life of single or married, uh, we all just uh, face this challenge. Uh, hopefully it's not uh, too negative. It, it is uh, by God's grace we can be sanctified uh, because the Holy Spirit definitely enduring in us and He will correct us, He will change us and some. To, to, to a degree, he, he will discipline us. If we keep on going the wrong direction, he will stop us and turn us around, sometime in a, uh, in a disciplinary way. Then verse 8 is also a warning. Therefore, he who rejects this instruction does not reject man, but God, who gives you his Holy Spirit. So sexual purity is God's will for Christian, and uh, we are not to live like pagans. We are to... Or be more upright, whether you're single or married. Uh, to, that's pleasing to God, that's honorable and holy to God, in front of God. And that's the way God designed and called us to live. And that's what he's talking about in 1 to 8. Uh, uh, that's uh, the, a few insight I have for, as, as a Christian for many years and then on the ministry. Uh, just not very organized, but I want to share this uh, just with my limited knowledge about. Uh, I'm 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 not here to trying to teach you. Uh, I'm a, I'm learning this. Well, I'm teaching you, but I'm also a learner. I'm also a student because Paul is charging me to live a holy life too, not just uh, uh, not I'm exempted. Well, I myself. Uh, 
when I look back my Christian life, there are a few things that I, I, I want to share with you about sexual purity. Um, it is, uh, we are all vulnerable. Uh, we, because of, as we earlier mentioned, a fallen nature, or we are, a, a tempta temptation is real and ongoing, you and me, you and I, as long as we live in this this flesh, in this body, are influenced by desires and need. And um, we can go uh, overboard. We can uh, walk out of the boundary God has designed for us. So it's an ongoing challenge. Uh, can temptation to singles, there, there are many. And temptation to married couples also uh, 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 everywhere. Uh, so um, the good news is that God is not has not stopped working in us. He's continuing His sanctifying work in your life and my life, and uh, we need to change and grow in Him. That's like why why He wrote this is so that we listen and we convicted and we steer our direction. To God's direction, uh, steer our behavior and habits according to God's will and God, according to God's purity. And uh, there's some uh, example I, I want to share with you. Uh, could be as a warning or could be as a reminder. Um, even people who are mature Christian. Uh, and they are not uh, immune from a sexual sin. Uh, even you are a very godly person, you are not immune. Immune. Look at David. Spiritual, but can be vulnerable. If he put his God down, Satan's ready to trick him. Um, give you some sh uh, extreme example. Uh, seminary teacher. Uh, I had a seminary teacher. Uh, te he was teaching us uh, homiletic uh, preaching. He's our. He's one of our teachers. I took a class with him. Uh, then I find out a year later uh, he had adultery with his uh, secretary uh, and the seminary fired him unfortunately uh, that's like a downfall for him a uh, teacher in seminary so spiritual should be mature Christian know the Bible but as I said we are all we're not muted even you are a pastor you are a missionary you are whoever, as long as you are a man or woman, as long as you have li you live in this flesh, uh, we can be uh, deceived, we can be tempted. So, so very careful. That my point is to be, be very careful, be on your guard, and to don't take this matter lightly. Uh, don't give yourself excuse that oh, I am. Uh, um, they always excuse, uh, and uh, even when you serve God. Uh, in the midst of serving God, uh, you can Satan can tempt you too. Uh, like you go to a mission trip, in a mission trip, um, you can have uh, impure thoughts about someone uh, in your team, that kind of thing. Uh, another example. I I know this is depressing, but but. Uh, we better uh, we better to listen to this feel depressed than to do this and, and got uh, to be and put into shame. Uh, there's a English minister arrested for uh, solicitating uh, underage uh, on the internet. Um, the undercover cops uh, on the internet to talk to him and then he set up a t meeting with that supposed to be an age person and, uh, and the police arrested him 
a minister, youth minister. Uh, recently, uh, Ravi Zacharias, uh, def definitely if you are, uh, if you know, uh, uh, he he was a very uh, prominent uh, defender of the faith, uh, uh, apologetic guy, so always uh, uh, in many uh, like famous school. He, he he set up a meeting to defend the faith. A very I learned something from him uh, about apologetics and stuff. But recently, they they find out uh, he was leading a double life, and had a lot of uh, misconduct in in his sexual life. And after he passed away, uh, those things revealed it, come out to the surface, and uh, actually shocked the uh, shocked a lot of you know, the evangelical world. Uh, that's a big, big, big. Uh, Blow and a warning to all of us. Uh, well, sex drive is biological; it is God given to everyone. But to control and use, to do manage our sex drive and needs, that's a spiritual thing. That that's something uh, we need God to help us. Um, to control and use our sex is according to God's purpose. Is something spiritual. And we need to rely on God all the time to walk in, uh, in the right path. Uh, temptation is real and ongoing. Uh, we are vulnerable, all of us. Uh, doesn't matter you're single or married, there are temptations. Uh, so we have to be very careful. Uh, for people who are married, uh, the Bible suggests uh, to cultivate and reach our relationship with our husband or wife, and that's the antidote for for temptation. And if you have a happy marriage, a, a happy sexual life with your wife and husband, and that's uh, take care of love of the business, uh, that, that you you are a happy man or woman, and um, that you are not hunger of, and, uh, for other. Um, inappropriate uh, relationship. But for singles, uh, uh, the Bi uh, actually the Bible encur um, not encourage but Paul uh, encourage people if they God gave them the gift to be single, that's a blessing. He he definitely said that in the Bible. He said, like me, Paul, being single is a blessing. Because he can serve God wholeheartedly. Uh, he has more time. He has no family burdens. No need to raise kids. Uh, he can have all the devotion to serve God and love God. So in that angle, being single is a blessing. But he said not everyone's called to be single. It's okay to marry. It's okay if God called you to be single. Be set. Be content if God have you to be married. Be content if God did not assign you. Uh, does not. Uh, have an arrangement for you to be married. Uh, both, uh, uh, both group of people can live a way, live a life that that's pleasing to God and have uh, satisfaction and contentment in Him. So, um, well, go go. It boils down to sexual purity is a choice, and uh, we have to make up our mind to do it. And we have to decide what to look at, with what to involve, uh, what to think, and what to act on. That that primarily, definitely under the spirit, Holy Spirit's control and guidance. But but we have to make up our mind. If we decide not to do it, all we talk today is non is not useful for you. Uh, if you decide not to do it, that's uh, that we already can't defeat it. So, by God's grace, we one day, in our journey walking with Jesus, uh, there may be time you stumble and f and, and uh, shipwreck maybe, but it is uh, if God prompt you, you repent and and let Him lead you. You make up your mind to live a holy life in front of God, and that's the start of the revival. Uh, we have to make up our mind. No one can force us to respond to God's calling to holiness, and that's a lifetime, ongoing 
a calling and, and uh, eventually a blessing from God. Uh, God calls us to be His children, and, and we actually not a lost soul in this world. We are, we belong to God and His kingdom, and His. Uh, we under God's name. We are His belongings. We are His children, and that's the this God that you and me worship is a holy God. He hates evil, and. May God change us in according to, to His image and character now that He gives us in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is my Lord and Savior and He's, respond, He's, He's working in my heart and my life and my morality and my, and my sexual purity. He's working every day within me to mold me and change me and correct me. So, as we, I mean, we yield to Him, yield to His guidance, then there's holiness for those who want it. There's holiness for those who want it. Um, if you be uh, convicted, uh, if you respond to God's calling and say, Lord, I, I'm willing to live a life that's pleasing to you, and live a pure life, help me, and God definitely will bless you. And He work with you to change your life into a life that's holy and pleasing to Him. That's holiness for those who want it. God is our help, and make so make up our mind to live purely to God. Uh, the Bible warns us: be alert and of sober mind. Your enemies, the devil, prowl, prowls, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith and in the comfort. Because, you know, the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. So we are in a spiritual war. Um, you are not the only person who struggle sexual purity. Uh, Everyone in the living Christian, everyone struggling is facing this spiritual battle. So don't be too, don't feel too lonely. Uh, uh, Jesus asked his disciples to wash each other's feet, as he set an example for us. Washing each other's feet definitely is a a gesture of humility. We learn to serve others as a servant, but also as of uh, as also related to sanctification. Uh, that in 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 the church of God, brothers and sisters are supposed to encourage each other to motivate each other to walk in the path of holiness and sanctification. We are to wash each other's feet. Uh, we do live in a dirty world, uh, fallen and broken. Uh, we do live in this world. Uh, how can one be clean and pure in front of God? Uh, Nowadays, every time we go out, we have to wash our head and wear masks. And you know, I find myself using the the hand cleanser too much. Every when I walk in the store, I, I rub, and when I come out, I rub. And, oh man, it's too much! It's like hurting my skin. Uh, but that's cleansing. That's that's protection. So in in our fellowship, a brother and sister, you and me are holding each other accountable. And helping each other to guide each other back into into the way of holiness. So if I have you you see me doing something not appropriate, and not not necessarily sexually or anything, uh, tell me and, and pull me aside and have one to one talk to me. To uh, maybe that's my blind spot. You know, I need someone to tell me, and so that I can be changed by God. So that's washing each other's feet, and that uh, can be important. So take a shower every day. Uh, uh, every, I mean, take a shower. As to we do live in a dirty world. Uh, I mean, a broken and fallen world, and and impurity everywhere. Uh, it is uh, too. Na it's naive to think you can live a holy life without. I mean, uh, struggle. Uh, 
First John one seven is that cleansing cleansing agent. Uh, confess our sin in front of God every every day or whenever we can. Uh, we claim to be without sin. First John one eight. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Uh, if we confess our sin, His faithful and just and will forgive us our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. It's like we do live in this world. We we can be contaminated, but confessing in front of God is is the way to be cleansed. It's like taking a shower and uh, to to be cleansed by God in through Jesus' blood. And also another motivation is to love God. I mean, I think that's the only motivation that is. That can really change us. When you know how much God loves you and how much Jesus loves you, and there's this will to live a holy life and pure life, and that we respond to God's love, we want to make up our mind and to change and to modify our behavior and to correct our behavior to be more pleasing to God. And that's the real ultimate motivation. So purity. With God's help, we need to make that decision in front of God. No one can force you, and no one can force me. And may God help us to make up our mind to walk this this the path of blessing. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love and grace, and you on the cross、uh, purchased for all of our sin and、uh, took all of our shame. And may you continue to shine in our life, in our darkness, so that we can be children of light. So bless us. We have communion today. Continue to lead us、oh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's、uh, prepare our hearts for communion. And、uh, this song I wanted to share with you is called "Living for Jesus."、Um, one of my favorite hymns.、Uh, the lyrics are so powerful, and、uh, definitely something for us to remember. We are, we are not just live for ourselves. We live for Christ, who redeem us. I think so. Today, you and me, for the rest of our life, is to live for Christ and glorify Him. Let's sing this one. Living for Jesus, a life that is true, striving to please Him in all that I do. Yielding allegiance, glad-hearted and free. This is the pathway of blessing for me. Oh Jesus, Lord and Savior, my heart gives to Thee. For Thou in Thy atonement did give Thyself for me. No other master, my heart be thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live, O Christ, for thee alone. Living for Jesus through earthly to while, my dearest treasure. The light of His smile, seeking the lost one, He died to redeem, bringing the weary to find rest in Him. Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee, for Thou in Thy atonement. To give thyself for me, I have no other master. My heart shall be thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live, O Christ, for thee alone. Let's come to the. Communion. I want to read a passage to you. Could 
even find it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Matthew 26, 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Verse 27. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day that I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to Mount of Olive. They sang hymns back then, uh, uh, after the communion. They sang a hymn and they went out to Mount of Olive. Uh, uh, Jesus set this up to help all of us to think of his love. Not to forget him and his grace and God's salvation for us. So we just talk about sanctification, to be pure in front of God. It's God's grace through his power and strength and the power of the gospel. And in the Holy Spirit in Jesus, we learn and we can do it uh, with his help. And that's how, how I believe it. And may God give us strength. And he said, this is the bread broken for you. Take and eat. Uh, this is my body. Uh, he's, he's the bread of life. If we, he feeds us. He enriches us and nurtures us, uh, especially our spiritual life. Uh, without Jesus, we, we can do nothing. Not talk about sanctification. We cannot do, even do a simple thing. So it is all God's power, but we need to respond to God. We need to submit to Him and say yes to Him instead of avoiding Him and run away from Him. And that's um, the formula. God is always leading us, but we need to follow to, in order to achieve everything significant in God's eyes. And then the cup is a drink from it of you, the blood of the covenant pour out for many for the forgiveness of sin. It's like that Moses sprinkled the blood on the altar uh, to, to set up a covenant with the Israelite. Now Jesus, through his blood on the cross, uh, the treaty, a uh, covenant is established. Now in his blood, we can be cleansed and forgiven. And now let's communi- take this communion together with, uh, with our thankful heart. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we praise you. Uh, we'll that you are so gracious, so loving, so patient, uh, so righteous, and um, so wise. And none of us can uh, know you and approach you. It's only because you first approach us and called us. So we respond to your love and grace. We respond. We, we say yes to you. We yield to you and let you take control over our life. We give the steering will to you, the offer of our life. So bless this time as we, in June, take this communion together as a church. May you bless us. And bless all the brothers and sisters. Whatever they're struggling, God, your grace is sufficient. And you are more powerful than anything in this world. And we trust that you are the victor. And you are the resurrection of life. And uh, so we commit this uh, all of our hearts into your hand. Pray for ourselves in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you are a baptized Christian, I encourage you to take this with us. Uh, so this is Jesus said this is the body uh, take and eat it this is my body and and, uh, broken for you so let's do it to remember Jesus and then he said this is the cup of the new covenant of the covenant this pour out for the many for the forgiveness of sins so through Jesus blood we are forgiven all our sin are washed clean. And uh, although our sins are like crimson, He will make it white as snow. Let's remember Jesus' grace and love for us. And may He help us to live a holy life for the rest of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Why don't we end with a, another song? Simple. Let's 
Six months ago, I have decided to follow Jesus. 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 No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Though no one joins me, Still I will follow Though no one joins me Still I will follow Though no one joins me Still I will follow No turning back No turning back I have decided To follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back gracious Lord we come in front of you we bow and pray and pray for your help and strength while we do live in this world fallen and for wickedness, oh God, it is your will that we, who are set apart by your grace, to reflect that holiness in our daily walk. So God, since this is your will, we know you will provide. And you have taught us in the Bible, and we obey, and we believe that's, that you will supply all the resources we need in order to fulfill what you have taught us in the scripture. So if we are discouraged, if we are, uh, feel defeated, may you revive us and strengthen all of us because that's holiness for those who seek to ask for it, to want it. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Until